Hi everyone and welcome to TDARG RC. This is a channel for fixed wing RC enthusiasts. Uh, and this is my first video and I just wanted to tell you a little bit about my history if you like. Hopefully it's not too boring and you'll watch it to the end. Um, and also um, we're here in my loft at the moment which is where I tend to do all of my uh, modelling and builds. Uh, it's not the ideal space, it's a little bit cramped but um, it's, it's what I've got to work with at the moment. Um, hopefully this won't be like this for too much longer because we should all be well be moving house soon. But at the moment we're um, uh, in the middle of the corona outbreak, so currently in lockdown, so everything's on hold at the moment. So this is what I've got to work with for now. Um, so it, yeah, if you like um, EDFs and bolts of planes, nitro, um, electric then hopefully you'll find this channel interesting uh, and um, the reason why I wanted to do a channel is because I've spent so long over the last couple of years um, watching YouTube and watching all the other guys like Essential RC, uh, the Petrinich Petr brothers which I love, Stuart Warren, um, T. Bobo Rap One, all sorts of people that I really enjoy watching and I've watched hours of their uh, channels um, and I also wanted to have a go myself uh, and thought it would be interesting to uh, to put a channel together basically uh, and so I'm going to be doing uh, unboxings I'm going to be doing reviews I'm going to be doing build series uh, I'm also um, going to be doing a fair bit of technical stuff because I like technology um, so the technical side of things and the and the um, electronics not too in depth but just going through certain mainly around the radio gear and programming radios and that sort of stuff um, on that I'm a big fan of Free Sky, um, so most of the kit that I use is Free Sky and OpenTX. Although my transmitter is a Jumper T16, uh, which I've just recently uh, moved to, uh, which is great. But most of the receivers and radio gear that I use is, is Free Sky, so a lot of it will be uh, talking around uh, their kit. So a little bit about my background. So I've been into fixed wing RC um, for a long time. So since 1990 was when I first got into it, uh, when I was a, a young boy. Um, and I was absolutely obsessed with it for about seven years until 1997 um, and then um, I hit the age where you get a car and all the other things that come along with that sort of thing, um, particularly um, in the UK, um, drinking and that sort of stuff. So um, yeah, that was a long time ago obviously, but um, yeah, I hit that and just completely um, dropped out of the RC side of things and uh, never really looked back to be honest, never really gave it a second thought. And then uh, hit middle age last year, um, not sure if I had a midlife crisis or something like that, but decided it would be a good time to get back into it. Um, so that's what I did. Uh, and it's been absolutely fascinating. It, as you can imagine, since 1997, the technology's changed so much. Everything back then was um, Nitro and Boltzer. The last plane I flew was a Flare Patriot, which I built from scratch. Um, and that had a super custom 65 four stroke engine in um, and I've actually uh, got something to uh, to show you around that later on um, so yeah uh, and just to see how it's all changed it was all 35 meg back then there was no um, lipos on, or anything like that there was a couple of gliders that used some heavy NICADs um, but that, that was about it it was all nitro so to see how it's evolved has been absolutely fascinating uh, and I've really just got completely engrossed in it and I think YouTube's probably helped with that because you can just learn so much from watching YouTube videos um, and I feel like I've learned a lot and really got my head around the new technology, the LiPo technology, all the new radio gear, 2.4 gig and all that sort of stuff. Obviously phone models are all new, they weren't around uh, and I've really um, enjoyed getting into EDFs because they weren't a thing either. If you wanted anything like that, the closest thing you had was um, a ducted fan uh, with a very high revving nitro engine, but they were expensive, uh, noisy, dirty, weren't particularly fast, um, nothing like the EDFs. Um, and of course, turbines back then were around, but they were, you're probably looking at 10 grand um, just, just for a turbine. So, uh, and again, that's, you know, that's moved on a lot and become more, more um, affordable. And uh, my ultimate aim is eventually to get into uh, turbine, but uh, we'll take it one step at a time for now. 
So yeah, that's my background um, and that's where I am now. So um, if you are interested in fixed wing RC and you like EDFs and foam models and bolts models, nitro, electric, gas, uh, and eventually turbine, like I say, then hopefully you'll find this channel interesting. So what we're going to do now is I'm just going to give you a quick look around some of the projects I'm working on um, in my loft. And uh, so hopefully you'll find that interesting. So we'll get stuck into that now. Right then, everyone. First thing to show you is my Hobby King Tiger Moth, um, which I think is a VQ. Well, I know it's a VQ models Tiger Moth. Um, which I've been building during lockdown. Really enjoyed building this. It's kind of reminded me of the good old days, although I obviously haven't built it from scratch because it was an ARF. Um, still had to do a fair bit of work to it, but I've really enjoyed it. Just even the smell and the feel of Boltzer and the covering and all that sort of stuff really brought back a lot of memories. And um, really impressed with it. Fantastic build quality. Um, really nicely finished model. Uh, I mean, amazing for the price it was. Um, so highly recommend this. Uh, if this is the sort of thing that you're interested in. Um, so here we have on the front of this my Super Custom 65 four-stroke engine from uh, back back from 97, which was the last time I used it. And I remembered, back, um, so I had the Flare Patriot and I came in for a heavy landing and knocked off the undercarriage and the cowl, I think, and um, kind of basically just thought uh, that this is it now, I've, I've had enough. Um, and the one thing I kept was this engine, which I kept up at my folks' loft. And I suddenly remembered a few months back that um, I'd got this. So I went up there, this is before lockdown, to, to grab it and managed to dig it out of their loft. Um, still in the box, all completely gummed up. But really, although it's uh, however many years old, 20 plus years old, um, it was in, you know, it's only been used for four or five flights or something like that. So it's pretty much brand new. Um, so I got it back home, um, stripped it down, built it back up again, and then got it on a bench on my patio, um, connected the, the fuel lines and the glow plug driver and connected that to the original Model Technics 20 plus year old glow plug that was still in it. And to my absolute amazement, I turned it over and it fired straight up straight into life didn't just give me like a bit of a kick and a splutter it fired straight up and ran uh, I just could not believe it so uh, really pleased with that and it's really nice to be able to use it again and I've um, run it up um, in this model since installing it with the servos connected and everything and, it, and it's run for you know a full tank of fuel through it so several minutes and uh, runs absolutely flawlessly so really looking forward to flying this it's going to be a little bit nerve-wracking because um, I have spent a fair bit of time on it um being a bit rusty now at building but um yeah um i'll be filming the maiden for that and then the next one i've got which um i also haven't flown yet because um of lockdown is this one which i think this was off banggood and i think it's called a vt model um i think that's right um obviously a hawk and this is a 6s edf and um Really looking forward to flying this. It should be should be pretty quick because it's not a particularly big model, but it's uh, it's a six S twelve blade, so it should sound great as well with retracts and flaps. Um, so yeah, this should be good. I've got a gyro in this as well um, because I've got a jumper T sixteen, uh, which has got the multi protocol uh, transmitter in it. I thought I'd try a lemon um, receiver in this. So I've got a lemon receiver with a satellite. Um, and the gyro um, installed in there. In fact, you can probably have a look. There it is. And then the satellite is just positioned there in the nose. So yeah, that's got a gyro built in. So I'm a big fan of gyros. Um, I'm a big fan of gyros. Uh, I just think anything that can help you fly in windy conditions and therefore um, mean that you can get out in more weather, then uh, I'm all for it. I, you know, they, they don't actually help you to fly, they just do what they say, which is stabilise the plane. And uh, anyone who hasn't flown with a gyro, and if you don't like the idea of it, I, I definitely recommend trying one. 
um, you'll be amazed how much smoother and, and it is just a lot more enjoyable, I think. Um, so that's this isn't the first hawk I've had. I really like hawks, um, but I, um, when I got back into it um, after the little trainer I bought, I then got this, um, which you can kind of see stuck in the corner of my loft there. This is the Hobby King hawk that costs something ridiculous, like 37 quid, I think, when I bought it. Um, 37 pounds, sorry. Um, so yeah, um, 4S, 12 blade, actually flies really nicely. Um, really good little plane for the money. Um, so that was kind of my first EDF. Um, but the problem is with it, it's not particularly quick and you have these horrible little spindly undercarriage. There's no retracts on it. Um, and they, they bend pretty much every time you come into land and of course don't look great either uh, when you're flying around. And that there is an MX-2, which um, I flew a couple of times and uh, someone advised me down at the club. They said, you, you'll break the undercarriage on that. And sure enough, I did. Uh, and apparently it's renowned for having a very weak undercarriage. So I've not flown it since. Um, so there we are. I do apologize for uh, the state of my loft, but I will be clearing it out after lockdown, give myself some more space. Um, so thought I'd give one of these a go. Um, first, um, First uh, foray into FPV flying, and um, so I've bought all the kit for that and the Zod um, flight controller and camera. So we're looking forward to getting that set up. I've got an Ezo glider, um, which I bought a few weeks ago. I might actually save this one now because I've also um, been looking at the, one of the Phoenix 2.4 meter gliders on Banggood, which I really like the look of. Um, so I'll probably get one of those ordered pretty soon as well. Uh, and then up at the top here, I've got a Hobby King Radjet, which you can see there I've bizarrely converted to EDF. And I've got, uh, I think it's a six blade 3S EDF on that with a 3D printed shroud. Um, I haven't successfully flown it yet because the, when I took it down to the field, I had a problem with the EDF and it wasn't, uh, sorry, a problem with the ESC and it wasn't spooling up properly. It was in heli like a helicopter mode. Uh, so I've reprogrammed the ESC, but I haven't had a chance to try that. But so yeah, it'll be interesting to see whether it's any good. Might be a complete load of rubbish, but we'll see. Uh, and then this is a free wing MiG-15, um, which I've converted to 12 blade 3S EDF, which in hindsight was a bad idea because I now only get about two and a half minutes of flight time out of it, but it does sound good and it goes well. And actually that is the EDF out of the MiG-15. So that's those two. Um, I've got the Tundra over here, which you'll, you'll know from my channel that I've done an unboxing and a build video. Um, so obviously I haven't flown this yet because of lockdown, but this is going to be my everyday flyer. You know, these huge chunky wheels on it, it's going to be great from um, trying to fly from any sur uh, surface in pretty much any weather. I'm going to put a gyro in this as well to stabilise it. And as I said on that um, review video, I know that's not necessary for this sort of plane, but again, it really will for me make this like an all-terrain plane, if you like, fly in any weather, in any conditions. Um, and then the fact that the wings just come off, I can chuck it in the back of the car, which is great. Up at the top there, it's not very interesting, it just looks like a white box, but that is a Flycat 6S from Hobby King. And then the brown box underneath is um, an MX-2 um, 3D foamy. Um, so yeah, yet to build those, but we'll get around to doing that. That's the box from my um, Tiger Moth. And then here I've got a Seagull Extra EA300, um, which I was going to put the 65 four stroke in until I bought the Tiger Moth. Um, but what I've decided to do with this one is actually make this one electric. So I've bought a, um, a decent, um, I think it's a Ripmax 46 motor to go in this. So that'll be good. Uh, we'll run that on 4S. And then underneath I've got an FMS Avanti Mark 1. Um, so I've got a good price on this, which is why I bought that. Uh, and then down at the bottom here, I've got a Sky Sword 6S model from Hobby King. Um, and then that long thin box there is actually a Tony Niehaus, I think it is, or Niehaus Designs, um, Nat, the little uh, new little 
models that he's brought out, um, which will have a 50 mil um, 6S in it. And they, uh, 6S is a 50 mil EDF. Uh, and they look great fun. I'm actually going to save this one um, because it's a complete kit. Uh, I'm going to save that until I move and I've got my proper workshop set up. Um, but hopefully some of these others, uh, you can see I've got a fair bit to go at. And you might say I'm a little bit addicted, um, which most people think I am, particularly uh, all my colleagues at the office. Um, yeah, so um, I've got plenty to go out on this channel, plenty to review. Um, and then over here, also got um, a Hobby King Hummer, because I fancied a, a, a flat profile foamy. Um, so I built, I built this during lockdown as well. Um, not flown it yet, obviously. But yeah, interesting to just uh, have a go with this and just chuck it around. And if I crash it, it uh, it's not the end of the world. Um, so that's gone together quite well. And then finally there, there's my uh, Jumper T T16 box. Um, and I've just recently um, swapped the faceplate on this for the carbon fibre one as well. So um, yeah, I really like the Jumper. It's a good, good radio and I love the fact it's got the uh, multi-protocol uh, transmitter in it, even though, as I say, most of the stuff I fly tends to be free sky.